welcome back to Behind the Silicon. I'm Lucy Hedges and today the Snapdragon Insiders and I are in the city that never sleeps. Yes, I'm talking about New York. This episode is all about next-gen performance from cutting-edge computing to inspired mobile mastery, all powered by Snapdragon. So think speed, intelligence and maximum efficiency, all designed to make you unstoppable. So buckle up because this crossover episode is about to shake up everything you thought you knew about premium performance. With us today are Adam Matlock, a social media tech reviewer, and Michael Ramachotti, a product reviewer and analyst. Today, we are going behind the scenes with a content creator who is tapping into the true potential of technology by utilizing both a smartphone and a laptop powered by Snapdragon. So, are you ready to embark on this creative journey? Are you excited? Oh, totally. And I'm super excited to see how Snapdragon can really push the limits of how much power they can put in these mobile devices. Definitely. What about you, Adam? I'm really looking forward to see what the benefit is in the creator workflow with the seamless connectivity between the laptop and the smartphone. Well, I feel like you guys are going to get a lot out of this and learn quite a lot. So if you're ready, it's time to find out what it takes to go from that first frame to final cut. We're here with Grace Wells, a visionary content creator whose stunning visuals and cinematic brand campaigns are seen all over the world. Hey Grace, thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the studio. We are very, very excited. It's quite the cool setup you've got here. Very compact, very nimble, small footprint. Thank you. Yes, I try to keep it that way. Uh -huh. And I'm used to sort of showing my behind the scenes process, but never live like this in person. Yes. So this is very, very exciting. So I think a great place to start would be to get you to walk us through your process. How do you kick things off? How do you start? It's it starts with the story, always. Mm -hmm. I think people underestimate just how important storytelling is, even in very short form content. Yeah. So I'm starting with, what do I want to communicate to my audience? Mm -hmm. And then piecing together the visuals. How do we communicate that and how do we get there and make it as exciting as possible? And you can film broadcast quality commercials on your smartphone, right? You absolutely can. Yes. Believe it or not, it's true. Today we're going to be using the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7. Mm -hmm. This is such an impressive device. It has so many pro level features, 4K, HDR, super steady shots focus tracking, so very excited about that. Later, we're going to put it all together using the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. Yes. So these really compact devices, they just, they help you have so much control over what you're trying to film and edit and get that final result in a very nimble way. So what are you working on today? I am going to, in the spirit of your visit, film some shots with the devices, about the devices. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna call this power in your pocket, precision at your fingertips. Love that. So I've got these transitions that sort of bookend the shot that I'm working on. I want to move into the computer screen and then out of the nice. computer screen. Um, so this is the final shot where we're moving out of it. And I wanted to include the Galaxy Z Fold 7 in there as well, just to have a little nod to that and trying to add some more contrasty lighting to make it pop and make it a bit more dynamic. And honestly, I'm just still impressed as well by just how small the setup is. I always work on a kind of a smaller scale and it's nice to not have to use so much to get a really impactful result. We're going to open with the Galaxy Book 4 Edge, mm -hmm. sort of rotating into frame and then opening on its own. I actually hot glued a little bit of a wooden skewer to the back of the screen which I'll edit out later, of course, so that I could open that laptop mm -hmm. hands-free. I shot this in reverse, actually, so that when that Galaxy Book lands, it opens exactly in the place that I want it to. As if by magic. As if by magic. <laughs> so this is what that shot looks like, unedited, of course. So the hand will come in, and as the laptop rotates, the hand will push that screen down using that skewer, and then we'll reverse it later. <laughs> Loving the prop. So what's like the final vision for this video? Basically, I want to be diving in and out yes. of that computer screen. So I like that. What, exactly. Once that Galaxy Book opens, we're actually going to dive through to transition into the next shot. And once we exit that next shot and come back, we're going to be back in this sort of world of the Galaxy Book that we've established. So we have this, which is the first shot, and then later we will see this hero shot with both devices featured. So my hand comes in, we'll pull out of the screen, and then my hand will come in again, it will close it. And then I'm thinking we'll put some sort of text or the Snapdragon logo yeah, back yeah. there as that screen is being closed. So am I right in saying that you shoot on both a smartphone and a camera? 
I do, yeah. They, they both serve very different purposes, I find. I think what's so interesting and so great about the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7 is really the efficiency aspect mm -hmm. of it. With this particular device, you can move it from a tripod to a gimbal, you can use it handheld, yeah. you can change the settings really quickly and easily. It really just helps speed everything up. So I know you shoot on cameras, am I correct? I, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's fine, it's fine. The fact that the Z Fold 7 is actually this capable and can yeah. shoot 4K HDR and can share files from the phone itself to the Book 4 Edge with yeah. Quick Share, it's super convenient. And I actually might consider switching over to it. Ooh, you've inspired him, girl. <laughs> and Adam, I know you shoot all of your content on a smartphone. I've been doing it for years, and as a one-man show, it makes my life a lot easier to be yeah. able to get in and get my work done, and it really works with my workflow. Grace, thank you so much. We cannot wait to see the final product. Grace makes high level stuff. It's, it's much more professional than what I do. So I'm always anxious to learn things from different people and see how they use the technology in, in their workflow. I think hanging with Grace today was really a good insight to see how these devices communicate so well with each other. It's really, really tempting to switch over. And I think I might just do it. Now it's time for us to cross town and meet someone on the team who can tell us all about what's next. We're now joined by Manju Varma, one of the brilliant product managers and the lead behind the next generation of the Qualcomm Orion CPU. Manju, how are you? I'm good, and thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited to give you all a first look at what's coming. After all, it's users like you that we've designed it for. So we spent the day in a studio with the exceptionally talented Grace Wells using devices powered by the Qualcomm Orion CPU, Gen 1 and Gen 2 respectively. What do you guys think? You guys have been using these devices. With all the improvements we've had across the board with power and efficiency, it's, mm. it's really exciting. After using the Galaxy Book 4 Edge for the last, what, few months now with the mm. XLE, it's insanely powerful. And yes. I, I can't see how they'd really make it any better, but surprisingly, they figured it out. At Qualcomm, in Innovation never sleeps. Yes. Just when you think you've hit the ceiling, there's another level and more to unlock. Yeah. I love that innovation that never sleeps. We reimagine what's possible, mm -hmm. and we are so excited to share with you guys that we'll be debuting our Gen 3 Qualcomm Orion CPU at the Snapdragon Summit. Oh, that's very exciting news. You know, one of the things I just love about Summit is it's just a great chance to see what engineers like yourself and the team have been working on. Can you talk us through the core design philosophy of the next gen CPU? Our goal was to redefine what's possible in mobile and compute, yes. especially when it comes to modern workloads. So we started off with the launch of our Gen 1 Orion CPU with Snapdragon Exalate, mm -hmm. and then followed up with our Gen 2 CPU in Snapdragon 8 Elite. Now the paths have converged. So now we have to rethink efficiency, scalability, and how to integrate AI yes. at the core of the design. And that's how we got this custom CPU architecture that is ultra on performance, yeah. but also power efficiency. I know all about how Snapdragon is leading performance benchmarks, but how does this next generation push that to the next level? We've made design enhancements from the ground up to scale on performance across the board. Our technology scales workloads more efficiently. This means faster app launches, smoother multitasking, and just overall better responsiveness. And you guys are hearing it first here. We have the world's fastest mobile CPU and the fastest CPU in its class in the compute space. Wow, that's just two pretty big statements right there. So right. talk to me about how that translates into real world uses. Think about editing high resolution video on your mobile phone without having to wait for it to render or you know yes. for it to lag. Or running desktop class creative software on a PC powered by Snapdragon. These are the experiences that our focus on real world experience can really deliver on. Oh, I'm super pumped to see how well this next generation of CPU actually performs with video editing, because that's like my main thing that I focus on. So what we're talking about here is the same CPU technology in two different chips that can cater or adapt to very different needs, right? 
Exactly. And we've designed it to be flexible enough to scale across devices. Yeah. So the core technology is the same, mm -hmm. but the specific configurations like how many clusters, how many cores within the cluster, what's the cache size allocated to each of these clusters. Now that would be very unique to the form factor we are designing for to optimize not just performance, but power efficiency for yeah. each of the form factors. Yeah. Tell us how AI has been integrated into the third gen CPU. We set out with the premise that this CPU would be able to handle everything from AI powered photography mm -hmm. to handling more complex agentic AI workloads. So AI acceleration is built into the CPU yes. to help optimize workload distribution and also optimize our Qualcomm Hexagon NPU mm -hmm. to provide the optimal AI AI performance and power efficiency. I love hardware, whether it's computers, it's something I've been involved in for a long time. So seeing the progress and seeing what Snapdragon has been able to do, especially with the Orion cores over the last few years, it's something that is really impressive. It was great to be one of the first people to learn about their awesome third generation CPU. I think anybody that's a creator can say firsthand that efficiency and power are two very big things. Being able to edit videos and stream videos seamlessly is a big win. And that is a wrap for this episode. We got to see how one content creator is using Snapdragon powered technology to transform her studio into a full on production powerhouse. We dove deep into the breakthrough performance that makes it all possible and what's coming next. Innovation never sleeps. And while this may be the end of this episode, it is the start of something incredible. I'll see you next time. The Behind the Silicon series has been shot on Snapdragon. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications.